Wow, this episode had it all. Romance, battles, explosions, betrayals, plotting, scheming. Shogun is going to stick the landing. I can feel it in my bones. I thought it was going to fall in a heap at some point, and here we are after the penultimate episode and it's never been more interesting. After Hiramatsu sudoku himself last episode in order to sell Toronaga's supposed surrender, we rejoin John, Mariko and Yebashiki as they return to Asaka to hand themselves to Lord Oshido. We finally get the return of Mariko and Bantaro's son, but he turns out to be a little turd, so I'm now wishing he'd stayed away. Did they have another actor for him this episode as opposed to episode 3? The plotting and scheming in this episode is top notch, and seeing these actors giving it their all really raises Shogun up to that next level. Here come the Emmy nominations. This episode focuses on Mariko a lot and her efforts to save Lord Toronaga in the face of the obstacles put in her way by Lord Ashido. She really holds her own and shows her incredible devotion to her lord and her Christian faith. The back and forth between Mariko and Ashido really is thrilling, with even the highly reserved Asakan court ooing and ahhing at their jabs and barbs. Ashido's insistence that no one is a hostage in Osaka plays a central role in episode 9 and leads to a thrilling will she or won't she scene that you have to watch for yourself. This also leads to an interesting confrontation between Mariko and Lady Achiba, whom she has not seen since the day she was married off to Bantaro. There's a couple of touching moments in this episode, and it really tugged at the old heartstrings in a couple of places. People use the term roller coaster ride of emotions a lot, and this episode of Shogun is one of those times. I was fearful, then I was happy, then I was devastated. The ending of this episode is truly a low point emotion wise. However, it leaves the door open to huge ramifications in the final episode next week. I cannot wait. Shogun Episode 9 Crimson Sky is a 10 out of 10. It has absolutely everything. Everything except for Fujisama. But hopefully she makes a triumphant return in the finale. If not, in the surely forthcoming second season? Come on! Surely! Now let's get into the recap and the spoilers. Episode 9 of Shogun opens with a young Mariko running through the snow. I think this is basically her attempt to end it all. Maybe if she can freeze to death, she can finally join her dead family. She's recaptured or rescued and returned to her home where you can see she's pregnant with her son. Father Martin, or maybe not yet Father Martin, as he is quite young, introduces Mariko to Christianity. This is the scene where she gets her famous crucifix. Or is it a rosary? I'm not too familiar with Catholic items. Pulling into port, Yabashigi spots the black ship. We get shots of their party being paraded through the walls of Osaka, reminiscent of episode 3 when they left Osaka, and foreshadowing the security that will need to be traversed should they decide to leave. We see Lord Ono's family. They are clearly being held hostage, but to say so would be to insult Lord Ashido. I like how Yabushigi keeps trying to push Blackthorn to just use his Japanese. It shows how he doesn't fully trust Mariko to act as an intermediary. Mariko hands a message from Toronaga to Kiri, Toronaga's wife, and they say they hope it works. Does that piece of paper have his entire plan written on it? I don't think we see this paper at any point later on. Are we meant to infer what it says by Lady Kiri's actions later on? Martin seems to have fallen for Toronaga's ruse, but his Voss, the Visitor General, doesn't share his certainty. I enjoyed hearing Kiyama talking to Blackthorn in Portuguese. He tells him that they already have enough pirates, which Blackthorn denies. But how else are we going to learn who is the ultimate warrior, pirate versus ninja? Kiyama reinforces here that he's really only allied with the church to make money. The young heir shows an interest in Blackthorn by pointing him out to his mother, Lady Achiba. Poor old Yabashi can't take a trick. First he offers condolences for the death of the Taiko's wife, which is described by Ashido as hollow words from a traitor. Then he tries to say that he was tricked into escorting Toronaga out of Osaka. But he put his foot in his mouth by mentioning Josen. You idiot! I love all of the costumes in these scenes. These must be their finest court clothing, and it shows with so many vivid colours and varying fabrics. I love how Mariko just swans in here like she owns the place. 
Ishido mentions how she made her way to Osaka with the treacherous Yabushi. I'm wondering if he's setting up plausible deniability for using yabs at a later date. Anyway, Lady Yoshiba welcomes Mariko and they discuss how long it has been since they saw each other. Since they were girls. Achiba almost seems to be fearful of Mariko. They say that there will be a poetry competition in memory of the late Dayoan, and could Mariko honour them with the first line? She says something about leafless branches and Ishido says that it's nice but bleak. He's looking forward to some joy after these days of death and treachery. Mariko says that she won't be there as she's heading back to Edo and will return with Toronaga when he is due. This is where the tension really builds. Mariko is basically putting Ishido's words that nobody is being held hostage to the test. If she's not a hostage, she can leave, right? Right? God damn it, Mariko. You give me chills in this scene. Talk about a strong female character. Wowee. She just lays it out for Ishido and tells him how it's going to go down. She's the daughter of Lord Akechi Gensai. Her line has been samurai for a thousand years and she will not be captive to anyone. I love the look on Yabashiki's face. Another classic Yabashiki scene is he tries desperately to be let in on Mariko and Toronaga's plan. And Anjin! Was he in on it too? Who writes about a leafless branch in the spring? Honestly. No wonder Todnabu Asano is going to win that Amy. Mariko actually addresses Blackthorn as someone other than just her interpretee and asks him personally to stay out of it for her. Such a nice little scene, showing that there's still something there, an acknowledgement of more than a professional relationship. Now we get to what I think is probably the weakest scene in the episode, maybe in the series. Mariko's son asks her to stop what she's doing. Kiyama has offered him one of his granddaughters if Mariko complies. But Mariko berates him and explains that Toronaga is his lord and he will decide who he marries. No offence intended, but this kid either can't act or his accent is too off-putting. Anna Sawai has occasionally broken into what I consider close to a Kiwi accent. This kid sounds almost Australian. If Mariko disgraces him, she is no longer his mother. The scene of Mariko's retinue leaving gave me goosebumps. It really took its time to build up the anticipation. People slowly taking their position as the rest of the hostages look on from the walls. The music here does some really heavy lifting with a soft droning adding to the sense of unease. Anna Sawai's performance here was terrific. The stoic look on her face as she placed herself in harm's way showed the determination to follow her orders combined with the lack of care for herself. Amazing stuff. The effects are wonderful during the fight scenes, with limbs flying, fingers being removed, and blood splattering the gravel of the courtyard. The dull greys of the stone make the reds of the blood stand out even more. Mariko's appeal to Kiyama and Ono forced them to show that they were powerless and being held hostage by Lord Ishido. Will this tempt them to switch allegiance to Taranaga? I like the fight when Mariko motions for her pole arm. She puts on an impressive display, but it's just that. It's for show. An act of resistance. She was never going to fight her way out of there, but the fact that she felt that she had to is a massive slide on the city of Osaka. Oh yeah, here's the good plotting and scheming. Mariko admits defeat, but proclaims that due to her inability to perform her duties, she must perform Sudoku. The camera focuses on Kiri, as if this was the plan that she's tucked into a kimono. Mariko asks Kiyama to second her, as to take her own life will be a sin as a Christian. Lady Achiba knows what the score is. Mariko would gladly die, and if she can take the occupants of Osaka down a notch on her way out, all the better. She plays it so coy. Oh lord, I have no counsel for you, but we're stuffed either way. She openly admits that they have hostages in front of Kiyama and Ono. Lady Achiba asks for Blackthorn to have an audience with the heir, but it's just a ruse to get Mariko to come so she can be told to stop this Sudoku attempt. Mariko explains that she's going ahead with it and only Achiba can stop it. Achiba reminds Mariko of what will become of her son, and that's it. You've done goofed. Bringing the children into it. Mariko has a beautiful line about how 
Flowers are only flowers because they fall. If they were around all the time, we wouldn't appreciate them as much. Anjan attempts to persuade Mariko to abort her attempt on her own life, but she is determined that she can finally be set free. Such a sad scene. You can really feel the anguish in Anjan's voice. Yabushigi's manservant has a message from Ashido. Notice Yabushigi holds his hand out for the paper, but his man looks around surreptitiously to check no one is listening. Ishido offers service instead of death, but he does not wish this to be recorded. It's the small things like having Yabu expect a written command, but receiving only a verbal command that shows the double dealing going on. Can Yabushigi trust Ashido to hold up his end of the bargain if nothing is written down? I still don't get this scene with Blackthorn in the garden. Is he drawing a line in the sand? Is he disrupting the status quo? Is it a one because he feels alone? Mariko has confession with Father Martin while the servants make her deathbed. And the drummer bangs out a sick beat to announce the going down of the sun. The next scene had me choked up for a lot of reasons. She ties her legs together so that she isn't left in a revealing position after her death throes. I felt sorry for Mariko when she realised that Kiyama had abandoned her and that she would be committing a sin. The look on Blackthorn's face as he realised that either he had to allow her to go to hell or to assist her in Sudoku really got my emotions going. It shows he's willing to sacrifice for those he loves. Just as she's about to do it, Ashido enters and laughs at the sight of Blackthorn wielding the katana. Mariko is free to go, and all of the other wives ask if they can leave too. They can leave if they request a permit. His bluff has been called, and he has a little dig at a woman threatening Sudoku. Cop that. John helps Mariko up, and they hold hands. It looks like a wedding, and Kiri is looking on with interest. I was so relieved after this scene. What a fool I was. This fella getting the ladies wetter than October with his sexy fan dance. He's going to be drowning in clunge. Mariko and Blackthorn finally get another bout of sexy time. Yabushigi is having a drink on the wall, but the poor guardsman doesn't notice just a single handle protruding from his belt. And kidney stab! Yabushigi is letting the ninjas in. The ninjas seem to be only killing the men as they tiptoe past the women and children. Yabushigi heads inside and makes it seem like he's the one raising the alarm so he can continue playing both sides. Mariko says that the shinobi have come for her as they didn't immediately kill her. They just try to kidnap her. They head to a storehouse outside that has thick doors. But now they are trapped and the ninjas are going to huff and puff and blow the door down with explosives. Blackthorn wants to barricade the door but Mariko places herself next to the explosion. She knows that her death will turn everyone against Ashido. The Christians will martyr her. And that's the end of the episode. What a bummer. But also, what a brilliant episode in terms of storytelling. Talk about setting up a low point for the triumph. I'm giving Shogun Episode 9 Crimson Sky a 10 out of 10. It had everything I wanted in a drama. High stakes, tension, plotting and scheming, double crossing, ruses, ninjas versus pirates, romance, sorrow. Episode 10 is going to have to be an absolute masterpiece to do Episode 9 of Shogun justice. I tip my hat to the creators of Shogun. They have done a wonderful job and I hope they have season 2 ready to go in 2025. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time and have a good one.